Before I go to bed at night, I enjoy my evening adult beverage. And uh, this was back in about 2009, I believe it was. I was enjoying my evening beverage, watching TV, flipping through the channels, and I stumbled across Elton Brown's show, Good Eats. And I watched it for three nights in a row. And after that, I started just, I hit the double record button on the remote and started watching his program. What I liked about his show is I've always enjoyed cooking, but he broke down the science behind cooking and why you have to take certain steps in, uh, in your cooking. So for me, it was kind of like going back to school. And after about a month of watching his show, the recipe I'm going to demonstrate for you today is the Chewy Chocolate Chip Cookie. And this was the very first recipe of his that I ever tried after I started watching his show. And uh, in the show, you know, he took a, a bag of Nestle chocolate chip cookies and he broke the recipe down and he made it three different ways. He made the thin and crispy, he made the puffy, and he made the chewy. And he showed by varying the ingredients and varying the technique how you could achieve a different result. I've made chocolate chip cookies off the back of the bag and when you first make them they're kind of chewy and about two hours later you about knock your teeth out when you're trying to eat your chocolate chip cookie. You either got to dip it in coffee or dip it in milk to soften the darn thing up. Well my favorite variation is a chewy chocolate chip cookie so that is what I'm going to demonstrate for you tonight. Now back when I started this cooking odyssey you know we had kitchen stuff and uh, but it wasn't necessarily the best stuff and so in order to make this recipe I had to go out to, to my friend and neighbor Dave Forth and to his business Minot Restaurant Supply you know we we had cooling racks but we didn't have half sheet pan cooling uh, cooling racks so I bought a couple of these in order to make the recipe and the nice thing about these you know, we, we had small cooling racks but these are designed to fit inside of a half sheet pan uh, you know the ones we had were basically for cooling off a, a pie you know so I didn't have a lot of real estate in order to put cookies on and so anyway I went out there and I bought a couple of half sheet cooling pans and I'm at home dishing out my chocolate chip cookies out of the racks and my wife came around the corner and she said what is that and I said honey they're they're cooling racks where did you get those and I said mine are restaurant supply how much were they and I told her how much they were and she got mad at me what did you do that for we can't afford that we don't need that we don't have room for that as I'm sitting there dishing out my chocolate chip cookies Anyway, uh, speaking of equipment, the next thing I went and bought was an electronic kitchen scale. I use this all the time. I got it at Gourmet Chef, and I was making a different recipe that day, and my wife came around the corner and gave me the same routine. Uh, you know, how much was that, and we can't afford that, and we don't need that. And, but anyway, the more I cooked, the more my wife saw value in what I was doing and so for Christmas in 2010 she and the boys got me my first stand mixer and then I went and bought a food processor and so anyway after that now she's okay if I blow money on kitchen stuff now one thing about kitchen stuff you will not find me at a pampered chef party you will not find me at a Tupperware party you will find me at nice restaurant supply stores buying nice stuff. Uh, as Elton Brown always says, the only unitasker allowed in the kitchen is a fire extinguisher. Everything else has to be able to do more than one thing. So, if you're going to buy kitchen stuff, buy nice stuff. So, the recipe I'll do today is Elton Brown's variation, the chewy chocolate chip cookie. The ingredients in this cookie are two sticks, that's eight ounces of USB. USB is unsalted butter. 
hey, if Rachel Ray can have EVOO, I can have USB. And next to that, we have, let me grab the cookbook here, 12 ounces by weight of bread flour. Now, in order to get a chewy chocolate chip cookie, what he says uh, by using bread flour, bread flour has more of the wheat protein in it, which causes gluten, and gluten is chewy. So by using bread flour instead of all-purpose flour, you will get a chewier texture. And again, weigh that. And then up next, we have a teaspoon of kosher salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, and uh, two. the other variation, in order to get a chewy chocolate chip cookie, what he does is ups the ratio of brown sugar to white sugar. And by doing that, uh, brown sugar has molasses in it. Molasses likes moisture. It retains moisture, thus keeping it more chewy. So that's the first, another variation he does is he increases the brown to white sugar ratio. And also he said the darker the brown sugar you use, the chewier they're going to be. So what we have here is two ounces of granulated white sugar and eight ounces of, uh, in the recipe he says light brown sugar, I use dark brown sugar. And then in the next um, little cup there that looks icky, we have one large egg plus one egg yolk. And what he says in the recipe, uh, egg whites tends, tend to dry things out, so he removes one of the egg whites, and then he substitutes two tablespoons of whole milk uh, for that egg white. And then we have mixed in there also is one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. And what we'll do is we'll stir that up with a fork before we put that into the uh, into the pan and then we also have he calls for 12 ounces of uh, chocolate morsels of course this bag is 11 and a half so keep your mitts off of those you don't want to be snacking on them you need them for your cookies so don't be snacking on them and I'm using gear daily or whatever it is I'm using milk chocolate instead of semi-sweet hey if you're gonna get sweet go big or go home now, one thing on ingredients, um, the, the flour that I get, I buy it in the 25-pound bags. Both my all-purpose flour and my bread flour I get from the North Dakota mill. I like the idea that hopefully I'm supporting the local farmers, so I always buy from, uh, flour from the North Dakota mill. The other thing, when I get sugar, uh, if you can see that in there on the label, it's crystal sugar. I grew up in Hillsboro, home of one of the sugar beet plants. And so I both my white sugar and light and dark brown sugar, I always get crystal sugar because I like the idea that I'm helping local farmers. And, uh, of course, growing up in Hillsboro, one of the rules out on the old Highway 81 is you never follow the beet truck too closely because those things will break your windshield. And how they can get sugar out of mud, I don't know, but they do it. And uh, so anyway, that's a word about ingredients. I always try to buy local. And then, so the first step we're going to do, we're going to melt that butter. One more word on why melt the butter. Um, from what I remember of his show, he says uh, butter is 15% water, so by melting it, um, you know, that, that liquid, that water portion, once it is mixed in with the flour and you start agitating it, it forms gluten, which is chewy. You get, you know, kind of uh, bread making. I know in some of his other recipes, for the or the thin and the cake one, uh, the puffy, chocolate chip cookie recipe and some of those he creams the sugar into the butter uh, you know which punches millions of little holes into the into the fat and stuff so anyway in this recipe he calls for melting it 
in the uh, description of this video on YouTube, what I'll do is I'll post all three recipes that are out there on the Food Network. Now, we'll start bringing this together. Pour in your melted butter. Grab your sugars. Now I guess it helps if I plug this in. Sorry about that. Put on the paddle attachment. Sugars in. And then what he says, you crank this up to medium speed and let it run for two minutes. Oops, it's kind of spitting out, so I'm going to turn that down a little bit. So we'll run that for two minutes. Okay, two minutes of TV time have gone by. Let's slow this down a little bit. And slowly add in the egg, milk, and uh, vanilla combination. Now, you sort of reach the, you know, you got to try to pour all that in there. Well, sometimes that's hard to do. So, always have a supply of these around. Paper plates are A1 first class multitaskers. What we want to do, we're going to turn this down to uh, stir. We're going to add this in three installments. Paper plate will give you a little bit of flexibility. There's our first installment. Let that work its way in. Shut that off for just a second. Paddle, scrape it down. Let it mix a little bit more. That's all the way in, so now we will put in a second installment. Did I just do that? Mm. Yum. Butter herb 
flower out the beater. And the last step, add your chocolate chips. those mix around for a little bit. Okay. And now, as much of that off of there as you can. And then this dough, we're going to stick into a bowl. Try to get out as much as you can. Yeah, oh, you always want to leave a little lick with your fingers. Okay. We'll take and smear this around into here. Now what we want to do is we want to cover this up and stash it into the chill chest for an hour. I'm out of saran wrap, so I am going to use tin foil. So, we will stick these into the refrigerator for one hour. Now one little bit of advice I'll give you. As long as you're dirtying up dishes to make these, you may as well make two batches. Because one batch at my house, well, that might last, oh, maybe half a day. So, as long as you're dirty in the dishes, make a double batch. But make the batches separately to keep the proportions straight. Okay. Now we will take both batches and stick these into the refrigerator for one hour. Now we're preheating the ovens to 375 and in the meantime and then also preheat your pans otherwise your first ones into the oven will um, be on a cold pan so the pans are preheating as well use parchment paper do not use wax paper and pick yourself up one of these your your old school cooks used to use these this is a number 20 disher the little hasp that goes across the bottom has a 20 on it I think what it stands for is it takes 20 of these to make a quart. So we've got all of our stuff staged and in my oven I've got a dual oven so I can do two pans in the bottom oven, one pan on the top and we'll rotate them halfway through. And we will cook those for, in the cookbook it says 15 minutes but in my oven they're usually done between 13 and 14 so at the seven minute mark we will rotate them and then uh, cook them a little bit longer and pull them. One thing to note, at this point, you could uh, take, take and freeze them and bag them and tag them, put them in your freezer and take them out as you wish. When you do want to bake them, just let them thaw out. I cook these for about uh, 13 and a half minutes in my oven. And uh, if they look done on the pan, they're gonna be overdone on the cooling rack. So you have to make sure you don't cook them until they're overdone. Mmm.
Now don't those look really, really good? I can't wait. I'm going to eat every last one of them. These call for an ice cold glass of milk. I guess I gotta make some more. <laughs>